What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about mistakes tourists make in Norway. So this woman is actually Portuguese and she moved to Norway later in her life as an adult. And she's going to talk about all the mistakes that foreigners and tourists make when visiting and living in Norway. And I'm pretty excited for this topic because uh, it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, when I think of tourists making mistakes in Norway, I think of Americans. Uh, <laughs> I, I imagine Americans make all the mistakes in Norway because Americans are, for one thing, we're so different as a culture to Norwegians and Americans don't know anything about other countries, including Norway. Americans don't look up how to behave or how to acclimate to another culture. So Americans just act like it's America, like everything is the same. And that's just not very respectful. And also you're, you're going to embarrass yourself. So I'm pretty interested to hear about what things she is going to talk about that tourists, the mistakes that tourists make when visiting Norway. And I'm sure a lot of Americans do this stuff too. So let's take a look. I'm going to start with a very obvious one that I see happening almost every time I take a public transport. Oh gosh, <laughs> public transport. Oh, so this is a big one she sees all the time. I, man, we, we don't have public transport in the United States. Like it's not good. We don't really use it. So I am, this is actually really, really valuable to me. Which is here in Norway, when you buy like a transport card or like ticket, okay. um, they basically give you a card with trips inside. And most people, most tourists think that when they come oh. into the bus, they don't need to do anything uh, unless like the guy that checks your ticket comes in and asks for it. Uh, you get a ticket with a trip in your ticket. I'm already really confused. I, I actually don't know what that means. Uh, we we have buses some somewhere, some places in the United States, but I, I don't know what having a trip on your ticket means. Maybe Maybe your ticket is only good for like one trip and you need to get it stamped or or marked in some way. And you can't, just, whereas tourists will like just try to use the same ticket over and over again or something, maybe. But it's not true. Inside the public transports, there is like a machine hanged somewhere and oh. you have to beep it, just like beep and- Oh, you, oh, I would never have thought of that. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's not even like the most crazy technology I've ever heard of, but it's so much more advanced than anything I've ever seen. The, the very few times I've been on a bus in my life in the US, very few, uh, you just like pay or something. But in Norway, you have a ticket and you have to beep your ticket on a little machine. That makes a lot of sense, especially like in the year 2023. We're in the future now. You have to beep your card. Okay, yes. Then your ticket is activated. Okay. So it's not sufficient just having the ticket oh, bought, okay. even if you have the receipt, because that means you can go on more trips with the same <laughs> ticket, if you know what I mean. And yeah, <laughs> I was wondering about that. I was like, wait, is this like an infinite ticket hack? Like I, I, Americans could just pretend like we don't understand. And then we, <laughs> we just pretend we don't understand. And then we we don't beep our ticket and we just get infinite tickets forever. And <laughs> I wonder if any tourists have ever tried to do that, play dumb a little bit, but this is good. This is good. I absolutely can see where lots of tourists, especially from countries with not much public transport, wouldn't have any idea to do this. I, I would not have known about this at all. 
and when you beep it, it is valid for one hour and then it's over. Like okay. You can't use it anymore. If it is a like three day ticket or a monthly ticket, it works the same. You still have to beep it. It's just not saying like, oh yeah, but I have this ticket that it's for one month. It doesn't work like that. You have to okay. beep it, okay. make it valid, and then it's valid for one month. Okay, okay. It's funny because in, in the United States, if we had something like this, someone would definitely yell at you if you tried to steal a ticket or not beep it. But in Norway, which does have this, I feel like Norway is so, everyone's so respectful and responsible and honest. You, you probably could go on the bus and not beep your ticket. And I imagine not, no one would say anything. Like nobody, there's not as much crime and people are more honest in Norway. I, I, I think from what I, from what I have seen, especially compared to the United States. So you probably could get away with this in Norway, but everyone is very honest and everyone beeps their ticket like you should. The next thing that really surprises tourists when they visit Norway is that stores close quite early. Oh, A lot of stores yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't even, I've heard about this. I don't even think about this either. Wow. Yeah. How, how early do stores close in Norway? Because in the United States, we're a little spoiled. Like, we're, we're really used to being able to go out to stores at any time. Especially, like, Walmart or a big grocery store. Some of them are open 24 hours a day. All day. Every day. Forever. And we, we kind of depend on knowing we can go to the grocery store at any time. So Americans are kind of dependent on that. So this is actually a big deal, a big mistake, if, uh, if, for, if tourists don't know this. Close around four or five, maybe six also. Wait, what? Close around that stores close quite early. A lot of stores close around four or five, maybe six. What? Four or five? Maybe six. That is unbelievable. Why is that? Actually, when I think about it, like as an American, that sounds so early to me. It's like, what? Wait, I just got, I just got off work and I need to go to the store and the store might be closed. How does that make any sense? And don't the stores want to stay open to make more money or does this just have to do with the, the work life balance? Like all the stores close so that everyone who works there can go home and enjoy their day or Norwegians might just be used to this. This is so different. This is crazy. I, I could not imagine stores closing at four or five every day. Is this every day? What? Also during weekends, the hours are a little bit different. And on Sundays, most stores are closed. E oh my gosh. And then it's all closed on Sunday. Unbelievable. Uh, wow. America is so different from Norway. It, this, this alone, this is so different. Oh my gosh. Americans could, would be shocked. I'm shocked. Uh, yeah, there's like some stores in America that close on Sunday. Not many, like one, like Chick-fil-A. And, and some places don't sell alcohol on Sunday, but that's it. And everyone complains about that. <laughs> Even supermarkets or some supermarkets close on Sundays. Also, what? if you want to buy alcoholic drinks in a supermarket- I can't get, o I can't get over that. That's so different. That's like, I never realized how dependent we are in America on stores being open all the time. Most stores are open till eight, nine, nine, I'd say, most stores. Like usually every day, maybe a little less on the weekend, but nine o'clock on the weekdays, yeah, almost everywhere. That's, that's how much I depend on stuff being open. Like I really, feel like I can go do anything or get anything at any time. It actually, this really makes me appreciate that a bit more, honestly. Wow, maybe we're a bit spoiled here. <laughs> 
close on Sundays. Also, if you want to buy alcoholic drinks in the supermarket, you can only do it until 6, even though the supermarket is open until later on. Huh. You need to buy the, the alcohol drinks before 6 o'clock. Okay, that would, this would never work in the United States either, because alcohol... Americans are obsessed with alcohol. Like, it is such a big industry in America. I think the the alcohol businesses would literally lose billions of dollars if they shut the if they shut the do stores down that early. And for that reason, I feel like they're not ever going to do that in America. So, lucky lucky for us. <laughs> because they don't really want to be selling alcohol after a certain hour when they know people will easily get drunk if you know what i mean and <laughs> well that's in america that's the whole point like oh my gosh that's so funny how different it is in america nobody cares what you do with the alcohol no one cares everybody expects you're getting alcohol to get drunk no matter what time it is in the united states so that that's kind of funny to hear about uh the norwegian perspective <laughs> And there's also some exceptions on the time if it's before a Sunday or like a holy day it's mm. earlier even earlier you need to buy it I can right. basically do a whole video only about alcohol in Norway <laughs> so if you want that comment down below wow. the next thing is when tourists go to a restaurant here in Norway a lot of them will pay for a bottle of water that's a mistake because Water in Norway is free of charge. If you just ask for a jar of water or a glass of water, they would have to give it to you for free. Wow, okay. So this is exactly the same in the United States. She must be talking about uh, tourists from other countries, maybe? Because Americans are very, very used to this. Like, yeah, you go to a, to a, rest, you go to a restaurant and you can order a glass of water and it is always free. It's probably a law that it has to be available and free. And it sounds like it's exactly the same in Norway. I, I would never imagine ordering a bottle of water at a restaurant, actually. Wow, I wonder what countries are used to that. And yes, it's going to be tap water, but in Norway, tap water is as good or even better than yeah. bottled water True. Uh, normally is. So. True. No problem there. Just ask them for a glass of water and you don't need to pay anything. Yeah. Another thing regarding public transports here in Norway is that when you go into a public transport, you need to wait for the people that are inside of the transport leaves first. So <laughs> everyone should stay. Oh boy. Oh man. This is, uh, this is what Americans need to know. Americans need to hear this before visiting Norway. Uh, Americans are not good at being patient. We're not good at waiting in line. Uh, if you're if you're getting on an elevator, ha sometimes people will just get on before everyone gets off. Escalators, like <laughs> I absolutely would think Americans would get on the public transportation before everyone gets off, and and that would definitely come across as very rude. And, and I understand that, actually, but we're, we're just not used to it here. Like next to the door and leave the middle part without people, so open. So the people that it's inside the bus or the tram or whatever comes out. And when the last person, <laughs> you need to wait for the last person. When the last oh, no. person is out, then you can come in. <laughs> <You don't> <laughs> that sounds very nice. Like it sounds very orderly and very polite. And that's exactly why I think Americans would have a little trouble with this. But I think once Americans saw this and actually saw it for themselves, Americans would learn and wait. Like we, we are capable of learning. It's just that uh, most Americans don't take tr public transportation at all. So we're not used to it. You don't need to stay in line for the tram. So like, you arrive and you go to wherever you want and you go in in whatever order you go in, you know? Mm. In many countries you need to put yourself last of the last person who arrived, but here it doesn't work like that. But you do need to let people out first. 
Yeah, in America, with the public transportation we do have, you basically just wait at the door that, or, or wait at the bus stop or at the train station and just get in. <laughs> and if someone's in your way, like, it depends on where you are. Like, in New York City, people are probably going to push you out of the way a little bit or bump into you. And it's, it's not really that uncommon, honestly. It's definitely not as civilized <laughs> with the public transportation. Another big, big mistake tourists make when they are in Norway is that they call for a taxi or they take a taxi. Oh, that's a mistake? Taking a taxi in Norway is a mistake. Do, do people like to use Uber in Norway? Because a lot of people use Uber. Our taxis, I would probably never use a taxi. Just because they're very, very, very expensive, right? Is, is that what she's getting at? Especially, I see this happen a lot from the airport to the city center. First of all, the airport, it's close. But in, with the car, it's maybe, I want to say 50 minutes, maybe one hour. And the taxis in Norway oh. are so freaking expensive. Freak yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> that, that's exactly her point, that the taxis in Norway are very, very expensive. I, I think that's true, true pretty much everywhere in the world, but I could especially see it in Norway because Norway is expensive in general. Uh, but I wonder if Uber is a little better. Uber is very popular in most of the world now, I think, and cheaper. So I'm sure people do that or just use some other public transportation, right? But tourists, I, I get her point. Tourists, like, definitely think of the most, like, the first option available. So I could see a lot of tourists going to Norway and being like, okay, we have to get somewhere, a uh, taxi, let's get a taxi, and not really think about all the options. And then, like, racking up a huge bill, especially if you're going all the way from the airport to Oslo or something. And yeah, this is good advice, honestly. And uh, actually, we're about halfway through this video here, and I'm enjoying it quite a bit. These are actually very fun to learn about and, and very useful, uh, you know, mistakes that tourists make in Norway. It's teaching me a lot of a lot about mistakes. Hopefully I can avoid and other Americans can avoid. So I think I'm going to stop here for now and finish this video in part two. So if you've enjoyed this video so far, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment, perhaps with mistakes you see tourists making in Norway. And if you're interested in part two of this video or just more videos like this in general, me reacting to Norway and Norwegian culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.